Welcome to Temple Terrace Presbyterian Church. I am Lori Shaw, your liturgist today. And I'm Robert Shaw. Thank, Thank you, you for joining your voice and prayers with ours, strengthening our worship of God. All adults and older teens are invited to join this class via video teleconference or telephone. Please contact Susan Sampson for a Zoom meeting information. The church is not closed. We are merely distributed among many house churches, including yours. Invite your friends, family, and neighbors to celebrate the resurrection with us next Sunday, also via video. Share a photo of your palm branches or other greenery decorating your home on our Facebook page. I need your help next week for the children's lesson. What we need to do is gather a few things in the next couple of days so that you, we can participate. They're listed here, a couple of twigs, six to eight flowers, something to tie them all together with. Yes, you too can participate, even if you're old enough to vote. Your gifts to One Great Hour of Sharing last year are funding our response to this pandemic. Your gifts to this year will aid our recovery response. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of God as the Bible and the light enter. 2,000 years ago, people welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem with shouts and singing. Let us sing together and march in place or around your home as Kevin and Ashley lead us in the first hymn, in this first hymn, the first singing the first verse twice. Responsive invitation to worship is printed on the screen. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let us face this day of palms and Jesus' passion with honesty, confessing our sin before God, using the words printed honesty. on screen and then privately in silence. Holy God, sure of your faithfulness, we beg your mercy for our imperfect gratitude. We have looked to you for paltry favors when you have given everything. We have withheld from your people and from your creation the care and tending they deserve. Heal what we have broken. Nurture what we have neglected. 
and lead us to your vision so that we may know the peace of wholeness in you. God has come to you, humble, in the form of a slave, to free you from the weight of sin and death. Jesus' obedient suffering has released you. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of the one who is exalted beyond what we can comprehend, Christ, our Savior and Lord. Please greet one another with a sign of peace. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Our first scripture lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, beginning at the 21st chapter, verse. Hear now a word from the Lord. When Jesus and his disciples came near Jerusalem, he went to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives and sent two of them on ahead. He told them, go into the next village where you will at once find a donkey and her colt. Untie the two donkeys and bring them to me. If anyone asks why you are doing that, just say, the Lord needs them. Right away, he will let you have the donkeys. So God's promise came true, just as the prophet had said. Announce to the people of Jerusalem, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey. He comes on the colt of a donkey. The disciples left and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and its colt and laid some clothes on their backs. And Jesus got on. Many people spread clothes in the road, while others put down branches which they had cut from trees. Some people walked ahead of Jesus and others behind. They were all shouting, Hooray for the son of David. God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hooray for God in heaven above. When Jesus came to Jerusalem, everyone in the city was excited and asked, Who can this be? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Parades welcome a lot of important people. Even Jesus had a parade. This Sunday, instead of a parade around the church, perhaps you might be able to help a parent decorate your front door or your mailbox or perhaps your garage door or something else to show with a palm branch or perhaps something green, a green cloth or something to show that Jesus is still parading through our hearts. I would love to see a photograph of your decorations on our Facebook page or send them directly to me and I'll put them up there. Thank you so much. Please listen to the anthem, The Crucifixion, sung by Ashley Gillespie. It is posted below this video on our webpage so you may listen to it more than once. 
Our second scripture lesson this morning is from the letter to the Philippians, beginning in the second chapter, the fifth verse. This passage contains an ancient hymn to Christ. Hear now a word for you. Let us fear the same mind in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not require equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taken the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human likeness, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. When I first became a Presbyterian, the church was a great place to come visit. I could park near the door. A deacon would escort us to our pew. They would give us crisply folded bulletins. The elders took care of the building, provided various wonderful programs, and the pastor would even come to visit. Paul wrote this letter from prison, a prison so nasty that he had considered death so that he might be with Christ. Instead, he chose to stay in prison and to preach Christ to those in prison. Let each of us look not to our own interests, he writes, but to the interest of other. He's trying to tell us that we should do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than ourselves. In those days, the church at Philippi was having some outsiders who were urging ritual to demonstrate that their priority, piety was superior to what they had learned from Paul, even from the other Philippians. Paul wanted them to even regard those outsiders as better than them, to demonstrate the humility they learned from Christ. When I eventually, in that church, I became a deacon. And I, when I became a deacon, I was told I couldn't arrive in the last five minutes. I had to arrive 10 to 15 minutes early and park across the street and full bulletins. After a few years of being a deacon, they elected and ordained me as an elder. On one Sunday, as I walked into the church, I can park across the street so there's room for people to come and help the deacons with the bulletins, I was handed a plunger to help fix the toilet. And during the fellowship hour, people would come up to me and say, hey, about that program, who do I talk to to get it fit? Yes, that was me too. During those days, I became the president of the trustees for that congregation. One day, the pastor called me at work. And he told me that I had to spend my lunch hour to help him decide whether we should put a second coat of varnish down on the floor because the first coat looked terrible. It was ugly and cloudy. The painter was sure that, he, that this wasn't supposed to happen, but if he put, spent the money to buy another coat and put that down, it would look wonderful. After considerable consternation and thinking about the cost, we took the risk. And it did work out. After a while, as being an elder, I accepted the call to become a pastor and went to seminary. And now I write the book. Now I'm the one who gets the committees and reminds them to have their meetings. And I get to promote all of the wonderful programs that they come up with. And if somebody comes to visit me, especially at home or in my office, it's probably not good news. After several years as a pastor, I was elected and installed as a synod moderator. You would think that being in charge of seven presbyteries and probably seven or 800 congregations and who knows how many thousands of church members that I would get some respect. No, I wanted to tell each of the presbyteries what wonderful things synod was doing and how they would support them. And I had to beg each one for 10, 15 minutes on their docket. 
to tell them what good news I had. But I knew that I was moving in the right direction. I was following a man who took off his robe and he had knelt down before his disciples to wash their dirty, stinking feet. In those days, the roads were dirty and animals walked the roads, leaving all kinds of presents in the road. So you can imagine what kind of things people might have had on their feet. And yes, they really did need washing. And yes, they really did stink. Jesus got down on his knees and washed them, setting an example for us to follow. An example that this week that we're getting ready to celebrate, this holy week, this approach to the cross, demonstrates his ability to empty himself of all that powerful stuff so that he might take on all that we might have and offer and provide an example of what we did. This is the example that Paul is trying to teach us by going, by staying in prison and preaching, looking beyond himself and his own interests, looking to the interests of others. As he writes, it is Christ, though he was in the form of God, did not require equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself and became obedient even to the point of death, even death. So you see, we come to church not to lift ourselves up, nor actually even to lift other people up. This time during this pandemic, we're finding all new ways to worship together, but our individual isolation is not merely for ourselves. It is really for our neighbors and to keep them protected and for doctors and nurses, technicians, so they won't be overwhelmed in their very important job saving others. By doing this small sacrifice of staying home and out of the way, we're able to point beyond ourselves the new reality in Christ Jesus, who is in the world this day and every day. So it is that the church does not come together at this point, so that we might show our faith in Christ, but we are distributing so we might point beyond ourselves to Christ Jesus. And therefore we might sing as in this hymn, therefore God who highly exalted him, gave him the name that is above every name. Thanks. God. Once again, we have the opportunity to sing along with Kevin and Ashley as they sing the first verse twice. Let us pray together. Our Savior comes to us humbly, riding on a donkey and proclaiming a message of peace. Let us pray for the whole church, for the whole earth, and for all its creatures, and for all people and maid, saying, God of mercy, hear us. We pray that Christians hear and share the word of God as true disciples. God of mercy, here I am that all the ends of the earth will receive the words of the King of Peace. God of mercy, here yeah, I am. Yeah. That all leaders of church and of state prefer humble service to empty power. God of mercy, here yeah, I am. Yeah. That all people live with gratitude for the gifts of nourishment, for friendship, for family, for trust, for patience, and for hope with the courage and wisdom to change whatever fails to be life-giving. God of mercy, 
here I am. Let those who see the cross starkly revealed in their lives draw spring from the name that is above every other name. God of mercy, here I am. I am. We pray this day and lift up aloud doctors and nurses, orderlies and technicians, sanitation workers, grocery store clerk, and all of those who provide us essential nourishment and safety this day. We also hold in silence those deep within our hearts. Oh God, may they experience your peace. God of mercy, here yeah, I am. Yeah. We pray that we might live with gratitude for our ancestors, whose faith and witness have nourished our own, and that all who mourn today will be comforted, and that we who hope to greet Jesus when he comes again will be ready and will be filled with joy. God of mercy, here yeah, I am. I am. Look this day with favor, O oh God, upon all those celebrating a birthday or wedding anniversary this week, including Elizabeth Boyton, Helen Schumacher, Hannah Fillingen, Mary Tisdale, and Richard McVeigh. May they grow in wisdom and in grace. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let our hosannas to the one who brings us liberation take form in our tithes and offerings. Thanks to your generous gifts, ministry continues here at Temple Terrace Presbyterian Church. In these unusual times, please make your offerings through automated payments as you might pay any bill through your bank or with the Give Now button near the top right of our website. Checks may be mailed to the church and are also greeted. God of all good gifts, we thank you for showing us how to care for each other. May these gifts lead to great feasting for those who have no banquets set before them. May these gifts build shelters and places of prayer for those who are homeless. May these gifts proclaim your desire that all your creation live in peace. Give us grateful hearts, O oh God, in the name of the one who came to draw all people to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Please sing the first verse of our closing hymn along with Kevin and Ashley. assured of God's presence with you. Go with the mind of Christ Jesus as your path and God. Go with the constant companionship of the Holy Spirit. If you are finishing this worship service between about 10.30 a.m. and noon on Palm Sunday, please join for us for an e-fellowship hour. Check your email for our monthly newsletter and click the Zoom room under e-fellowship hour. Those without a camera or microphone on a laptop or smartphone, can join us via even a conventional telephone. Look in your 
scroll in either e-news or the printed scroll for instructions on how to call in. Bye.